How to fix warped brake rotors. Recently, I started having an issue with my car. The steering wheel would start shaking and vibrating, and I felt pulsation in the brake pedal when applying brakes at higher speeds. I've also got check brake system warning indicator light on the dashboard. These are the symptoms of warped brake rotors, and to properly diagnose the problem, we would need to measure brake rotors run out. Run out is the lateral movement or deviation of the brake disc as it rotates. The most common causes of warped rotors could be poor quality of brake rotors or brake pads, uneven brake rotor wear, seized brake calipers, overheating, over tightening the wheel lug nuts or not tightening them in a star pattern. To measure run out, we are going to use a dial indicator tool. There are two most common types of dial indicator tools. The first one has a mount with a magnetic base. The second type uses a clamp-on mount that can be attached to the car somewhere near the brake rotors. I personally got the one with the magnetic base. I think it is a little bit more stable and provides more accurate measurements. You can find one of these tools at your local auto parts store or buy it online. If you are interested, links for all of the tools used in this video will be down in the description below. Measuring Procedure Safely jack up your car and place it on the jack stands. Use wheel chocks to prevent the car from rolling. Remove the tire and place it under the side of the car for extra safety. Next, you will need to remove the brake caliper assembly. Make sure to be careful and do not damage the brake fluid hose. Hang the brake caliper using a wire or bungee rope or place it on a step stool or bucket. After removing the brake caliper, tighten the lug nuts. There is a special tool to prevent the brake rotor from rotating, but I personally used the handle from my floor jack to prop the rotor between two lug nut studs and it worked out pretty well. Tighten the lug nuts Torque them to their normal operating value using a torque wrench. For my particular car, it is 103 newton meters. Also, if your rotor has air vents in the center, you can use a large, heavy-duty screwdriver to prevent it from rotating. Set up the dial indicator tool. I placed mine on the top of a box and used an old brake rotor as a base. Next, measure runout. 10 millimeters or 0.4 inches from the outer edge on a smooth flat portion of the rotor. Place the dial indicator needle against the rotor. Make sure there is no dents, grooves, or other imperfections that could affect the accuracy of the measurements. If the rotor surface is uneven, you may have to turn or resurface your rotors first. Align the zero mark on the adjustable bezel with the lowest spot on the brake rotor. Rotate the rotor 360 degrees from the lowest spot on the rotor and notice the highest runout value. Make at least three more full rotations and make sure you are getting consistent measurements. The maximum runout for most cars should not exceed 0.002 inches or 0.05 millimeters. Refer to factory repair manual for the maximum runout value for your particular car. In addition, Remove the brake rotor and check for wheel bearing looseness and the wheel bearing hub runout. In some cases, the issue may not be with the warped brake rotor, but rather with the failed wheel bearing and hub assembly. On my car, the runout was double of the maximum allowed value. This explains why my brake pedal was pulsating and the steering wheel was vibrating when applying brakes. There are several ways to correct excessive runout. If runout is more than 0.002, but less than 0.009 inches, it might be possible to correct it using shims. Replace the wheel bearing and hub assembly if it has excessive runout or bearing looseness. If the bearing hub runout is normal, you can try to change the installation position of the brake rotor. Combine the highest point on the rotor with the lowest point on the hub or vice versa, and it may decrease overall runout. Resurface the rotor if it still has enough thickness. For example, I used a digital micrometer to measure the thickness and it was a little over 29 millimeters. It was acceptable and I was able to resurface my rotors for just $12 a piece at my local auto parts store. After that, the runout decreased from 0.004 to 0.002 inches. Replace the brake rotors if you prefer or if rotor thickness is no longer acceptable for resurfacing. After you are finished, 
reinstall everything in the reverse order of removal. Pump the brake pedal and make sure brakes are working properly before driving. If this video was helpful, please give it a like. Thanks and have a nice day.